going to begin by creating a card base. Over on the left hand side in the main panel here, we're going to select the rectangle shape tool. And I'm just going to draw, it doesn't matter right now, just make a square, it can be whatever you want. And with the selection tool selected, which is up here, we're going to select the shape we just created. And here under the position and size panel, which is this little arrow thing here, we're going to change the width to 5. I'm going to tab down and change the height to 7 and press enter. And we have a 5 by 7 card base. Okay. Now I want to change the color so we can have it highlighted here and go over to this little palette. And we're going to change the fill color to something a little more visible. Let's make it orange and hit OK. Now don't worry about the stars here. I just have them there as kind of a reference because I did this beforehand just to make sure that it looked OK. OK, so I'm going to go up to my library. The library contains a number of basic shapes. I'm just going to grab a simple star. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to close this window. You can access the library by simply clicking on this icon here. And as I mentioned earlier, I have that little set of stars over there just to kind of use as a reference to make sure that I'm getting things roughly the same size as I did in my original before I filmed this video. Okay, so I have that star here, and I'm going to copy by going to Edit and Copy and then Paste another copy of this. And we're going to go under Object, Transform, and hit Scale. I'm going to change the Scale option to Percentage and change it to 50%. I'm going to make sure that Keep Proportions is checked and hit OK. And that's going to shrink that down by 50%. And I'm going to go ahead and just stagger this here so that the, so that the right point on the star is lined up here. You can see how it's snapping in there. You see that blue line indicating that the two right points are lined up. Then what I'm going to do is copy this again and go to Paste. And I'm going to go under Object, Transform, and I'm going to scale that again another 50%. And we can take that one, put it here. Just kind of line it up wherever you want. You can also go under the Position and Size panel here, the little arrows and use the nudge option to just kind of move it in smaller increments. And then I'm going to duplicate this again, edit, copy, edit, paste. And I'm going to put this one right around here. Let's bring that down a little bit. Okay, so I have a, a very basic design going here. Now what I can do under layers is I'm going to select all four of these. And I'm going to click on the first one here. You can see the outline of the stars here. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on the remaining stars so I get all four. Now with all four of these selected, I'm going to go under Path and hit Union. And that's going to take and essentially just make this one solid piece. Okay. I can then take this, copy it, edit, copy, and then edit, paste. And it's going to create a duplicate for me. And here, I can just kind of begin to stagger these. Okay, and again, use the little snap to feature just to make sure that everything is snapping into place so that everything stays consistent. All right, I'm gonna paste another one. And it's okay if it ends up being a little bit too big because we're gonna have to resize this a little bit anyway. Okay, so I have basically the same design. And now we're going to go back under layers here and highlight all three of these. I'm holding down my shift key and clicking on each layer one at a time. And you can see it selects all three. I'm going to go under path and hit union again. And that's going to take it and convert it into one group, one shape. Okay, now if I click on it, it all moves together. So now what we want to do is with it highlighted over here under position and size, I'm going to size this to about 6.5 inches, making sure that I keep proportions and hit enter. It's going to make it a little bit smaller. And now with it a little bit smaller, I'm going to take and duplicate it. I'm going to go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in place. Now before I do that, watch carefully over here under layers. You can see that we have this. And actually, I'm going to double click on this. Just so you know, you can go in here and organize these layers and actually give them names. So I'm going to call this one 
main star cutouts, just so I know what's what. Now hit OK, and you can see it renamed that. Now I'm going to go under Edit Copy, and I'm going to go to Edit Paste in Place. Now watch the layers. Okay, it created another one, but it pasted it in the same exact spot. Now I'm going to call this the offset, and hit OK. And here's what we're going to do. With the offset layer selected, you can actually select the layers by clicking here. I'm going to select the offset layer and go under Path and hit Offset Path. So you can see what it does here. It brings up this menu and allows you to create an offset. And I kind of like that one. Maybe we can go a little bit more. And you can actually type in these values manually if you want. So if you want to get a little more precise, you can type in 1.5. Okay, that looks good. We'll hit OK. And now, don't worry, the main stars are still here. They're just below this offset. We can take it and drag it up over it so you can still see them. They didn't really disappear. It's okay. So what we're going to do next is highlight both sets of stars. We're going to click on one, hold down Shift, click on the other. And here again, I want to make sure that this is we want to make sure that this is the same height as the card. So we're going to change this to seven inches. Okay, now you can take it and just drag it over so that it snaps to the top and to the right. And I'm going to hide the main stars. I'm going to lock not only the main stars, but the offset as well and then grab my eraser tool, and we're gonna get rid of the orange parts to the right of our shape, okay? So because I locked the main star cutouts and the offset, even though my eraser went over these shapes, it did not erase them. So you have a lot of control in Shortcuts A Lot to do specific tasks. So now that we have that part of the card erased, I can unlock the offset and I'm going to hide the main stars. I don't want them to get messed with at all. Now, using the selection tool here, I'm going to draw a selection box around the main card base and that new offset shape that we created and let go. It's going to select both of these. And we're going to go to Path and hit Union. Okay, so look what it did. And now we can go back here into the layers and turn on our stars. You can also unlock them at this point and you have your shape card, almost. Okay, so now what we're gonna do to get the other side of this shape card is we're going to select just the actual card base, and you can tell that it's selected here. And I'm gonna double click and rename this so that it's easier for you to see what I'm doing here in the layer section. There's my card base. We're gonna go to Copy under Edit, and then we're gonna Paste. And once we have it pasted, over here under Position and Size, we can click the little Flip button. You can see it flipped it the other way, mirrored it basically. We're going to bring this over until it snaps. Now, they're not quite overlapped yet. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to select both of the card bases here in the layers, and we're going to vertically align them to the top side. I'm going to click on this. Okay, and it did move everything, but that's okay. You can see now that these are aligned at the top, so it's nice and even. Now what we're going to do is select this left one here and just nudge it over a little bit. Okay, Go back here and select both of the card bases and go to Path and Union. And now we have a solid card base. Now our stars are right here. They were just underneath. Okay, so they're still there. Everything's still fine. Okay, you can see how nice that looks. I need to nudge that. Okay, now one other thing that you can do with shortcuts sure a lot that's really cool. I'm going to move these stars out of the way. These are cutouts, so you're just going to glue them on after the fact. One other thing that you can do in shortcuts sure a lot is actually create a score line for this. So I'm going to go over here to the left-hand side and select my draw tool. I'm going to click, and you can see how it creates a node, and then anywhere you move your mouse, it kind of has a little string that follows. Now what I want you to do is hold down the Shift key. When you hold down Shift, 
it doesn't float as freely. It actually only floats in 45 degree increments. So if we want to make a straight line, if I let go of the shift key, if we're off by just a little bit, you can see, even if we're off by two degrees, it's not going to fold properly. So we hold down shift to make sure that it is in fact a straight line. We're going to click. And then again, it wants to make another point, but I'm done. So I can hit escape. And now we have a single line. Now what I want to do is you can see here, if we hide and reveal this layer here, you can see that it is in fact the score line. I'm going to double click on this and just call it the score line so we can keep it nice and organized. So I'm going to highlight the score line. And this is our card base. I'm going to name that card base. I'm going to highlight the score line, hold down shift, and select the card base as well. And then we're going to go here and we're going to horizontally align this. Okay. Now you can see that it is horizontally aligned. Now one thing I forgot to do here is to change the height of this to seven inches. So I'll select the score line here and under position and size, we're just gonna change this to seven inches. Okay, now when we did that, it kind of chopped off the bottom. So what we'll do is select the score line and the card base again, and we're going to, well, it's already horizontally aligned. Now we're going to vertically align it and we want to align it to the selection, not to the page. So we'll click on that, and as you can see there, it has that line completely centered on the card base. Now what we can also do, if you want to leave the score line solid, you can, but a cool feature in Shortcuts a lot is you can select the score line, and if you go under the fill and stroke panel here, you can change the line style to a score line, a perforated one. And you can also specify how long the dashes are. I'm going to change it to 8 and increase the gap a little bit to, let's say, 12. Okay, so it gives me less score lines, more spaced apart. All right, so now what we can do is we can take this, select both the score and the card base, right click, and we can group these. So now if we move these, they kind of stay together. And again, if you have a machine that's capable of doing solid score lines, you don't have to change that to a perforated. So the cool thing about Shortcuts a lot is it's completely offline and you can save your projects to your actual computer instead of having to store them in the cloud. You can go to File, Save Project As. I'm going to call this the Star Edge Card. I'll just save it to my desktop, and the format is a SCUT file, a .scut6 file. We're going to hit save. But now another cool thing too, obviously, is that you can take this, go to File, Export, and save this as an SVG file. So I'll call this the Star Edge Card. It's an SVG. I'll hit save. And of course, I'm going to make sure that it's design space compatible, and hit OK. So now we're going to pop open our Cricut Design Space and hit Upload Image. And I'm just going to drag and drop that in there and hit Continue and hit Upload. And I can right click, ungroup this, and you can see the stars are all there. This is here, and the score marks are on a separate line here. So we will need to hit Attach, and then we can hit Make It. And you've got your stars on one layer, and you have your card and card base with your score mark all in one place. Again, if you ever want to bring this back up, you do not have to be online. You can go to File, Open Project, find the star edge card.scut file. It'll open it up. It's telling me that I already have it open, obviously. There it is, very simple and ready to go once again. So since this is a graduation card, I wanted to include a cutout of the mascot for the inside of the card, but it is multi-layered and multi-colored. So I'm going to go up here into Trace, and I'm going to click Choose Image, and I'm going to bring up the logo, and we're going to change this to Color Layers. Now I know that this logo is only three colors, so I don't need all these extras. Sometimes it thinks that there are more colors than there really are. 
I'm going to change it to max colors three, update the preview. Okay. And I'm going to hit OK. So I quickly traced a multi layer piece without having a subscription or having to pay for it. Now, obviously, Shortcuts a Lot is a paid program, but it's a one time payment. You don't have to pay more than once. Okay. So also, another cool thing that I like to do is I'll actually highlight this. You can see that the line is here. This is the blue layer. And up here under fill is the fill color. You can double click on this and grab this hex color here. This is the actual hex color identifier for that blue. And then I'm going to go over here to the card base and select card base. Double click on the fill color for that. And then paste that hex color in there and hit enter. And now I have it the same exact color as this. Now, one other thing that I want to do is I want to put a white background behind this, kind of like I was making a sticker, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. Okay, so the blue layer doesn't contain as much surface as the gold layer. So I'm going to take and I'm going to select this gold layer so I can highlight it here under layers and go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in place. And I'm going to take this shape, highlight it, and go under the style option or the style panel. And we're going to change that to shadow blackout. Okay, so it made it, it's basically an offset where it makes it a little bit bigger than the original shape, but also the blackout feature gets rid of the details on the inside. Okay, I'm going to go back to the fill and stroke and change the color to white and hit OK. So that we can then take the two main layers and put them on top. Let's bring them up. There we go. And I'm going to give them a little nudge. Oh, I need to make sure I select them. Just give them a nudge. Okay, and then I can go back to this white layer. Go back under style and I can increase the size of that a little bit. I think that looks nice. And I'm going to go to shadow blackout rounded just to get those, those corners nice and round and soft. We can then take and select not only the two colors, but the new little shadow we created. And I can right click and put them in a group so that anywhere I click, it'll select all three pieces, all three layers. Then I can take and resize this. And then that's gonna look really cool on the inside of the card. So obviously we'll have a lot more room inside of the card and then I can add my little sentiment and I have a really cool little graduation card. Again, I'm gonna put this off to the side, go to file, export, and we'll call it grad edge card two, save it as an SVG, make sure it says design space compatible. And then let's open up our design space, upload, and we'll drag and drop it in there, upload, Okay, there it is. Let me get rid of this old one. Right click and ungroup that. Should keep our lion all together. As it does, you can see here. And then we have our stars and our card. You can hit make. And everything gets loaded nicely. I forgot to hit attach, which is why that score line ended up on a separate mat. But there it is, all ready to go. And we were able to trace a multi-layer object without having a subscription.